Hi, is this the barbershop? Yes. Hi, I'm a lady, as you can tell by my voice, but I get a buzz cut. I was wondering, can you guys cater to my needs? Uh, yes. So let, me, let me tell you what I get, and maybe you could let me know if somebody there can do it. Is that all right, sweetie? Uh, yeah, just explain to me. I like to keep the top short and spiky, but I like a little swirl in the front, almost like a bouffant. I buzz the sideburns way down to the scalp, and I leave the back long. Almost like a mullet, but with more pizzazz. Okay, um, when do you... When and, and, and I would like, excuse me, I would like um, a man's touch if one is available. I would like a man touching me. Okay, yeah, um... No offense to you, you sound like a beautiful doll. I'm probably old enough to be a grand sister. You sound nervous, here. doll. You sound nervous. Are you no, nervous? No, Don't I, worry about it. No, it's okay. Um, I was just hoping the people would be checked out. Okay. Oh, go ahead. Do you do what you have to do. I'll, I'll wait. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, yeah, just give me one second. Sure, I don't have anything better to do. So we have two master barbers here named Joey and Mike, and we have a new barber named Aiden. Oh, no, I don't want anybody um, new touching my hair. They have to be extremely skillful. Are either one of them Italian? Yes, they both are. <laughs> oh, that's great. I'm from I'm from Staten Island, so I like an Italian man. They, they usually do the best hair. Yeah, um, Mike's from Staten Island. If you wanted no to freaking to way. Yeah. Oh, my God. Billy, they have a barber there from Staten Island. I swear to God. Well, put me in with him. What's his name? Peter? We we will we will take one reservation with the gentleman from Staten Island. Please. All right, Mike, what day did you want to do it? Is there anything available now? He's actually booked up today too. Oh my word! My name is Iris. I will be in there on Sunday. So please spread the word about Iris, and we'll see if we could squeeze me in. Maybe I had a few. Maybe this be some gentleman sitting down that won't want to make an old woman like myself wait. I'm gonna tell him if anyone cancels to put you in first, okay? Spectacular. So what's your last name, Iris? Iris Lemon. L e l e m n. It's L. Let's and. Did you get that? I'm sorry, the phone's breaking up. I'm so sorry. Can you just spell that one more time for me? It's L E M I N N N. Okay. Um. Do you have a phone number to provide so we can give you a call? Oh, sure, sure. It's one five seven zero. All right, Iris. I'll let Mike know about you and I'll. Tell Give you a call, okay? Now that's the Staten Island gentleman, correct? Yes, his name's Mike. Amazing. Okay, thank you. All right, you have a good day, okay? You too, dear. Bye bye. Give me everything, yeah. I need, uh, I need everything. I need all of everything. What yeah. is going on, everybody? Tell me everything, man. Here. Hope everybody's having a great day. Today we are gonna get straight into the damn video. We ain't wasting no time chatting and bull crapping. We're gonna be taking a look at two action cameras that I have praised extremely highly. Don't mind my rig. This is the best thing that I could find. It's an iPhone rig case, but it has these screw mounts and cold shoe adapters all over it. And this is the best rig I could find to rig this up, so. So today we are taking a look at the DJI Osmo Action versus the Sony X3000. The two best action cameras that money can buy in my personal opinion. And there's quite a few differences here between these two cameras, even though they're both action cameras. All right, so let's get into those comparisons right now. And afterwards, you can decide for yourself which camera you think is the better buy. Before we start, I just want to say I bought both of these cameras with my own hard-earned drug money. So I don't plan on playing favorites here with either one of them. I'm a huge fan of both Sony and DJI, and I'm going to give both cameras their fair shake.
I'm not gonna compare spec for spec. It's not what I do here. And I'm not an extreme sports kind of guy either. We're basically gonna be looking at this from a vlogger, creator standpoint, you know, just going out and filming. So we're gonna be looking at image quality, stabilization, and features, basically. I already did a test run of this comparison a couple of days ago, and I had some interesting results. By the way, I almost died during that comparison. Like, legit, gruesome stuff almost happened. It was really scary. My life was almost taken from me. I'll show you guys a clip right now, but just be warned. If you got any little kids watching, any wee lads roaming around, kick the little heinies out the room because this is gruesome and we don't want them to wind up with night terrors. All right, here's that clip. Whoa, is that a fly or a bee? Oh, that's a bee. Here's my running test. This is the first time I ran in months. That's a freaking bee. Holy sh! <laughs> Yo, that bee just followed me. My goodness. Holy crap. I didn't know I could run like that anymore. Oh. My back and sciatic nerve have been screwed up for about a month and a half now. And I could barely walk, but when you're faced with danger, life-threatening danger. All right, okay, okay, wait. Wait one second, wait one second. All right, so the first comparison, full auto. Both cameras are on full auto. This is what you're gonna look at straight out of the box. Buy it, open it up, charge it, turn it on, hit record, and this is what you're gonna see. Now image stabilization, we're gonna give that one to the DJI Osmo Action. It's the best image stabilization I've seen so far in any camera. GoPro Hero 7 Black was great. DJI basically did the exact same form of electronic image stabilization, and they just capitalized on it and made it just a little bit better than GoPros. One thing to note, on the Osmo Action, if you are gonna shoot in full manual, and you're gonna set a fixed shutter speed, the image stabilization is gonna suffer a little bit. It's no longer gonna be that buttery smooth image stabilization. It's still gonna be good, don't get me wrong, but it's gonna look a little bit more natural and you're gonna see more of a natural type of up and down feel where the background is moving a little bit more as opposed to what you're seeing right now where everything is pretty damn smooth. And the reason why that is is because, if I'm not mistaken, both the Osmo Action and the GoPro Hero 7 Black, since it's electronic image stabilization and it's digitally done after the fact, it's not actually in camera, they both rely on shutter speed and a gyroscope readout to kind of balance out that image. And they do a really great job of it. I wish Sony would do this on their mirrorless cameras and full frame cameras it would be phenomenal so when you fix that shutter speed at let's say 1 over 50 or something like that you're gonna see a noticeable difference in the background and in the image stabilization it's still good just not as good i personally recommend leaving everything on full auto and then just setting a max iso of somewhere between two and i don't know 800 the most i would say two and 400 i like 200 because mainly I'm shooting outdoors. I probably would only shoot outdoors with both of these cameras, so there's most likely gonna be enough light to where I don't have to go any higher than 200. Four is the most I would personally do. Speaking of manual options, you're not gonna see many on the Sony X3000. It's not made that way. It's just more of a turn it on, set a few settings here and there, how you like it, and hit record. You're not gonna be able to set a fixed shutter speed or even the ISO, it's just, it just is what it is. But it does a good job. The image quality looks great on the X3000. Now I like, shut up truck. Freaking YouTube in here. I like to do my own color grading. So right now we're gonna switch over to the flat profiles on both of these cameras. We got decent E-like on the Osmo Action and we have neutral on the Sony. But they're both pretty comparable and the Sony is actually pretty flat. 
it's good enough. All right, let's switch over to that now. So let's get into some key features real quick, some things to know about both of these cameras if you're not aware about them already. Both cameras currently in the United States go for $350. Both cameras can be used underwater. The Osmo Action is waterproof by itself with no additional housing needed. The Sony X3000 comes with its waterproof housing and you need that to go underwater. So don't get it wet without that because bye bye. X3000. The Osmo Action does 4K up to 60 frames per second and 1080p up to 240 frames per second. The X3000 does 4K up to 30p and 1080p up to 120 frames per second. We already talked about the Osmo Action's image stabilization. Now let's go over Sony's real quick. Unlike the Osmo Action, it's not electronic image stabilization. It's optical steady shot. So basically the lens floats around inside the camera to compensate for any movement you're doing. And you still get some shakiness, but it's plenty fine. I mean, the image stabilization is plenty fine on it. It's just not as good as the Osmo Action. Quite possibly my favorite feature on the Osmo Action is called Quick Switch. And basically what that is, is you could set your settings up and then save them to custom profiles for super fast run and gun switching over to different video modes i have custom profile one at 4k 24 frames per second i have custom profile two at 4k 60 frames per second for slow-mo i have custom profile three set up for my time lapse so all you got to do is set those up save them to your custom profile and then there's a little quick switch button on the side and whenever you're ready to switch you just click and then select your profile and then you are in it literally less than five seconds you could switch over it's the best running gun setup i've seen on any camera i love memory recall on my sony a6400 on the sony a7 III. it's great but this is even better it's the best i've used so far now we have hdr video on the osmo action as well i don't use it because there's no rock steady image stabilization on it so you're gonna get super shaky footage pretty much useless in my opinion all right so now let's just go over categories image stabilization i already said i'm giving it to the osmo action software features goes to the osmo action accessories goes to the osmo action as well and i'll tell you why you can use a lot of gopro accessories with the sony x3000 but you need extra mounts and adapters the x3000 has a standard tripod mount on the bottom which i'm sure a lot of people love but gopro has built such a huge ecosystem of all these insane different mounts that i kind of like it better now because there's a lot more mounting options with gopro situation i mean i'm not looking to mount a little action camera on top of a huge tripod so accessories in my opinion definitely goes to the osmo action because it's more capable of using pretty much any accessory that was ever made for the gopro building design to me goes to the osmo action as well i like the look of the sony x3000 like i like looking at it i'm like wow what a nice cool original looking device but as far as usability on a day-to-day -day basis you're trying to throw it in your pocket you know you're trying to mount it up gopro came up with a great design osmo action said you know what we can't do any better than that let's just copy them and throw a few extra things on there like a front facing screen so i like the build of the osmo action it's also a little more rugged feeling the x3000 is like solid plastic and if you drop it on the ground there's a decent chance you could break it now one thing that i did notice on both cameras the x3000 is a little bit easier to color grade doesn't take as much time just adjust even in the neutral profile you just you just adjust the highlights add a little saturation you know play with your skin tones a little bit and you should be good to go now as far as selling points and features on the sony that's about it it's really just simple basic you don't get a lot of bells and whistles with it you get time lapse and that's really about it there's not a ton of options on it but with that being said the sony x3000 is three years old so you got to give it a little you know it's, that's a long run to have for a camera to be great and to shine for three years straight in my opinion it was the best action camera in the game and you know what it's all subjective it might still be the best action camera in the game also with the sony you don't have any screens you have one tiny little screen on the side of the camera and that's only used to control your settings so you're not going to be able to see what you're shooting and you can't play back the footage which is a bummer. The field of view certainly is wide enough. It's a 15 millimeter equivalent. So pretty much if it's pointing anywhere in your direction, you could 
safely bet that you're gonna be in a shot but still it's nice to be able to see yourself battery life is just about the same on both cameras for this whole video we're working with one battery and we've only drained about a quarter of the way on each camera it's pretty comparable and it's actually pretty decent I don't hate the battery life on this even though they're tiny little batteries it's a tiny little camera so it's not gonna suck up a ton of juice that's what she said now on to the Osmo action unlike the Sony X3000 you have two screens and you got one on the front and one on the back and you could swap over to either one of them whenever you're ready to and it's great you have time lapse on the Osmo action you have hyperlapse coming this is what I'm hearing that DJI confirmed in a future firmware update we will have hyperlapse which is great microphones this is a little bit of a weird one because I don't really know exactly what DJI plans on doing with their mic input just like the Osmo pocket the Osmo Action has a USB-C port used for charging and with the Osmo Pocket they released a USB-C microphone adapter that they had to then activate in a software update. So I'm hoping that they do the same thing with the Osmo Action but as of right now it's not confirmed. I have no clue. Hopefully they do but who knows. So right now you're stuck with the onboard mic. Now one thing I will say about the onboard microphone on the Osmo Action. The Sony X3000s is better. It's clearer, it's louder, it just sounds good. I mean, you pretty much don't have to do much post-processing to the X3000s audio. But the Osmo Action does handle wind noise a little bit better. And I think that's because the microphone, when it's in its little housing case, I think it kind of blocks it and they might have strategically done that. I've noticed on footage that I played back from both of these cameras at times where the X3000 just has a ton of wind noise rumbling. Not much if at all on the Osmo Action. And you also do have a 3.5 millimeter microphone jack right in the X3000 but it's pretty much useless. It's just as good as not having it there at all because every single microphone I've ever tested out which is like three or four on the X3000 is like the hottest microphone I've ever used in my life. The levels are so high that the audio is pretty much unusable. So just stick with the X3000's onboard microphone if you own or are going to buy this camera and buy a little stick on windshield, wind muff, little troll vagina on eBay and they make them small enough and you can just pop it right over the front of the X3000 and block out a lot of that wind noise. If you are considering buying one of these cameras, let's say you don't have either one of them and you're thinking about one or the other, I'm gonna have to give the edge to the Osmo Action and I'll tell you why. They both cost the same price. The X3000, like I said, it's three years old. You get so many more features on the Osmo Action than you do on the X3000. I mean, the two screens, the 4K 60 frames per second, the quick switch, the profiles, the accessories, it's just, it's a better buy. It's a better bang for the buck. Now, if the Sony X3000's price dropped down to like 250, 200, I might be singing a different tune here because I really do like the image quality coming out of the Sony X3000. And if you could save yourself $100, $150, then why not? And I really think Sony should do that. I think they should just dramatically drop the price down to like 200 bucks. I mean, it's a three-year-old camera at this point. It's just so much more on the Osmo Action. So if they drop that price down to like 200 bucks, I would be like, hey, go out and get yourself an X3000 right now. All right, so as you can see, there actually are quite a few differences between both of these cameras. But really, it comes down to what is most important to you. Given Sony its fair shake, this little white boy right here sat on that throne of action cameras, in my opinion, for three years. That is a super long run. Might be and might wind up staying the greatest run in action camera history. I've never seen any camera be the best in its class for three years straight. The run had to come to an end at some point eventually. And in my opinion, today's that day. So what are your thoughts? Do you own one or both of these action cameras or do you happen to own another action camera that you think is better than one of these? Join the conversation below. Also, let me know if you would have did the same thing in that little B situation. That was number one, number one, in a one-on-one -on -one fair fight, I would kick the bee's ass. I wasn't prepared today. There was no type of preparation. He snuck up on me from behind on my strong side. I'm left-handed, you see. So when he came up on the left hand, the only, the only option I had was a back left elbow. And the problem with that back, you know, that back left elbow is I was vlogging, okay? with my left hand so I would have given the back left his whole 
experience in life would have been totally rearranged and he would have questioned sneaking up on me like that like a coward and i would have risked breaking both of my cameras let alone my polar pro nd filter which is magnetic flying off into the fields and then i lose it and then i have to buy a whole new filter set because nd16 is a very usable filter it could be crippled right now Although I have to say, my back feels pretty good. I think I stretched out some stuff in that 43 mile per hour sprint. It's not easy when you obtain within the speed that I possess and not be able to unleash it. So I think the timing was right. When the bee came along, my body just said, now is the time, use the power that you've been given in this ugly world and use it right away. And I did, I, I, I kind of just, it, it really felt like, you know, remember like the Marvel vs. Street Fighter games, instead of just walking or jumping forward, you could just thrust forward and like a big white glare of motion blur sh followed you from behind your, your spine and you just, that's what I felt like. I kind of just felt like, I felt like little tiny rockets just came down on my back and then just, and I was, I was gone. I, I saw blurs of lights and before you know it, I'm like four blocks away from that bee and I don't remember much, but I remember it was epic. He caught a lucky break. He's lucky he didn't run into me when I was prepared for him. I would have freaking swatted him. Thank you guys for watching this video. Hope you liked it. If you are not yet subscribed, don't forget to click the button before you click off and go to another one of my videos. I, I gotta clean up. My house is a mess. It's not really a mess, but it's messy. So I gotta straighten up now like an adult and do adult things. I'll see you guys later. Salute. Resume is a heavy weight. Yeah, put it on my back. Give me everything, yeah. I need, uh, I need.